You know, I'm definitely watching the Flyers down the stretch here. I'm hoping they can kind of get into the playoffs. Definitely over the Islanders and, um, you know, even Pitt. Should I say Pittsburgh? Yeah, <laughs> over yeah. Pittsburgh. But <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big, I'm a big Torch fan, so I'm hoping the Flyers can uh, get it together the last five games. Yeah, yeah. we're I mean, expand on that because we were gonna bring bring that up. I mean, I know you played for Torts, I think, for at least the one season. Um, there's the situation the Flyers are in the East. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, and I and I I'm a huge Torts fan. I only had the one year with him. He signed a five year deal, but after the one year, he just they ended up letting him go. Which um, I remember they they brought a bunch of us in uh, to the GM's office after the season. They asked us like, "What do you think of Torts?" And I was one of the guys that definitely signed me and the Sedin signed off on him. Like, we love the guy. We want him back. Is, is he hard and demanding? Yeah. Does he call guys out in the media? Yeah. But I mean, he's a guy that um, he, he tries to get the most out of you. And at times, maybe his methods are a little bit uh, extreme, as you've seen in the last past week or so. Uh, but the goal is to get you to play your best hockey. So uh, it, he was a tough coach, really tough training camps, the toughest. And just, yeah. you know, kept you accountable, though. And, and the good part was everybody was at, at the same level. It wasn't like star players could make three, four, five mistakes before they get called out. Fighters could, you know, not. It, it was everyone was at the same uh, level. And I remember my favorite line was, you guys remember Tom Sestito played for the Flyers, too. Yeah, he sure. Was, he would tell Tommy, he goes, Tommy, you'll go from three minutes a night to no minutes a night if you don't get that <laughs> effing puck out of our end. <laughs> Oh, so, you know. like, everyone was at the same level um best motivational speeches before a game as you can imagine so mm -hmm. uh big big towards fan yeah no I, I i see a lot of the stuff you're talking about i guess we, we, we've talked about this a few times like when does his strategy start working against them and you talk about the media and like this last week or so uh he's scratching coots i mean going back was 11 Turia, 11 yeah. 12 games ago like what are you seeing is this just like a Flyers team that's just exhausted or is this like is there some bit of a response to maybe some of his coaching strategy I don't know like I can only speak from my personal experience like he came came out of the gate really hard with us and set the tone and he uh he called me out I remember in Anaheim early uh in in the season because of the way I played a three on two and he and he really wants his defenseman to play three on twos a certain way and I didn't do that in Anaheim at the end of the second period Perry goes through me and then Getzlov goes through my partner backdoor tap in and he comes in and loses his mind on me in the dressing room and yelling at me, screaming at me. First of all, he did it back, back in the coach's room, but you could hear like the room, the walls were so thin. <laughs> we could all, so me and like a couple of the defense were looking at her like, who do you think he's mad at? Like, <laughs> and Houston's like, I think he's mad at me. And, and then Edler's like, no, I think he's mad at me. And I'm like, it could be me too. Like, we don't know. So after like listening to him yell in the coach's office for five minutes, he comes in and sure enough, it was me. So he, <laughs> he calls me out. It's fine. After the game rips me again, um, you know, kind of blames the, the momentum of the game on me, which is fine. Rips me again a, a third time. So then finally I'm like, okay, I, I got to go talk to this guy in his office. Like I, enough's enough, right? Like I play the game hard. Am I, am I going to make mistakes a hundred percent, but like don't question my character or how much I care. So, I went into his office after a day off and I had this big speech planned and like, you know, when you're like shaking a little bit, like you're so emotional and you're like, yeah, I'm going to tell this guy exactly. how I'm like, I'm a fifth rounder. I had to fight my way to get into this league and blah, blah, blah. I had this big speech and he like sits there and he listens and he goes, can you swear on this podcast or no? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 He goes, uh, he's listening to me and he goes, Chus, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but I love it. I love how you're in here challenging <laughs> me and, I don't remember that play. I don't remember. And I'm like, well, I remember, you know? And <laughs> so anyways, like, uh, I'm like, okay, this, this went okay. And then, so we go into the room and he calls a team meeting and he calls in all the players and trainers. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to rip me now in front of the team, right. For coming into his office. And he just basically calls him and he goes, this guy just came into my office and just yelled at me and mother F me. And I respect this guy. He's like, I don't agree with anything he said, but I respect <laughs> this guy. And, and that's what we need more of. So, for, to, to your point about the Couturier, sometimes he's just looking for a challenge and he's looking for that. And then from there on end, he knew I was all in. He knew I cared and he knew I, I was I was trying out there, mistakes or not. And, and that's what he wants from his players. He wants them to be all in and care and try. And 
Yeah, his methods sometimes are a little different, but they work most of the time. Yeah, yeah they no, do, for sure. We've heard, we've, yeah, heard yeah, we've heard that, heard that about before. him a lot. Vinny LeCavier was one of the first yeah. guys that we had a few years few years ago when I was still there. And he said, we had fuck you contest literally every day the last year and a half I was there. And, and he goes, now he's like one of my best friends, a guy I call, you know, because Vinny didn't have the easiest time here. Um, and he, he was. Well, it doesn't like, work for some him. guys. That's like right. you said some guys, it just doesn't work. Uh, like I, I can remember one guy on our team, it just didn't work for him. He just didn't respond to that type of um, confrontation on a deal. So you got, he says first day, you got to have skin to play this game. You, you do have to have thick skin right. to endure him over the course of the year. And some, the guys that do excel, the guys that don't, obviously he, usually they end up getting moved. Right. Yeah. And do you think like I mean obviously he does it he said for the challenge like he he he's expecting or he wants you to confront him right like he's going to push you hard enough till eventually you come into the coach's room and address it or he's going to keep pushing you right I mean for him to have a powwow after you come in there like it's some sort of glorious thing like shows like how much he actually loves that I think the door the door is always open for him, and, and I think he invites the dialogue. It, mm. He obviously doesn't want guys always coming in and telling him to fuck off, right? But I think <laughs> he, it's it's a two way street. He's not a dictator. It's it's like let's talk about this kind of thing. Show me, tell me your because he's always like, well, how do you think the game? He's always interested on how other players like. What are you thinking here? Why did you do that? So it, it is it is to meant to make you better. Yeah. No, for sure. And you'd like to think that, I mean, obviously he's, you know, one of the longest kicking coaches here yeah. still, and, and he's got some you know major successes along the way. So something he's doing is working. It's just like the shelf life lands up being short and if for, for obvious reasons. I mean, he's squeezing guys and he's, and he's put, he's putting the pressure on because he's trying to get the most out of these guys yeah. and he's highly demanding. I just wonder like, you know, you go this whole season this year, you know, like overachieving, getting guys to compete on the highest level, um, you know, br bridging some gaps by just pure effort and buy-in identity. And then like come to the, you know, the most critical time of the season, you know, where the, the schedule is in their flyers favor, Actually, which, been know, in their obviously a little favorite. bit of a psychology game there too, but you know, to, to, to have these games in the last, you know, six, seven, well, seven in a row now, not even coming really coming close besides maybe one of them. Uh, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are on, on some of these games, this fatigue or what? Well, you said it like the Flyers have overachieved for most of this season, right? And he's dragged that out of them and they've become a playoff team halfway through the season. And then injuries, uh, a player suspended, a pretty important player suspended, issues in net now. Like it's all kind of caught up with them, mm -hmm. right? So, um, it, yeah, like is it easier to endure them if you're winning 100%? If you're losing, it's it's a lot tougher to hear those video sessions and the, the critiquing. But, um, it's still a Flyers team that if they make the playoffs, I think everybody would be happy with that, right? If I'm wrong, like start of the season, I don't think playoffs were really in the mix. So say what you want, blame them, you know, give them credit. Um, the Flyers are where they are because of him. And if they falter down the stretch, is he a perfect coach? No, he's not a perfect coach, right? Um, like his, his, some of his things last week, like I, I just thought watching them from afar and knowing him really well, like, man, I wish he would have just maybe not after that loss attacked them. Like, instead of just like, you want to kind of almost be uneventful this time of the year and save that right. for after the season, right? Save like mm -hmm. the calling, telling the guys, I don't know what we have here, the guys that can't play in the critical moments. Maybe save that for out. It's a great message, but maybe not the right time for it. 